Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now today we're going to be doing another operating system related video as you guys seem to really like um, me doing these videos and I actually did get a video uh, request in I think uh, a few weeks ago as you can see um, right here by this guy R-I-C-I-G-R-I-12 um, and he basically said, you know, could you do a video on CUB or CUB? I'm pretty sure it's CUB Linux. Um, and he basically said that it seems like it's a disher with a lot of potential, combining the Chrome OS and the ability to install Ubuntu offline apps. And I had not heard of this distribution before that he mentioned it, as I do believe that this is a fairly new project. I think that it's been around for only like a couple years. Um, but don't uh, you know quote me on that um, but this does seem as he said like a distro that has a lot of potential this seems like a very cool distribution of uh, Linux as it does you know take all the great things about Chrome OS and all of the um, you know Google uh, apps ecosystem and essentially combine that with the ability to download Ubuntu apps or standard Linux apps offline and run them natively on your computer. And that's one of the major downfalls of using Chrome OS or a web-based operating system is that you cannot run offline applications. You have to be connected to the internet pretty much most of the time. There, There, there is some uh, sort of offline features where you can save things offline, but pretty much you have to be tethered uh, to the internet to you know use the full um, functionality of the operating system but this basically takes that because you know uh, google chrome os has a lot of um you know good things about it and it basically combines chrome os with the ability to uh, you know actually download your you know great uh, offline linux programs that most people are already used to using and I think that you know this is going to be a, a very cool thing for for people that are looking into not really buying a um, you know Chromebook but maybe making their own and maybe getting um, like an older laptop maybe that they want to use as a Chromebook like device and maybe um, install this uh, distro on them or uh, on you know that computer and they can essentially use that as a sort of Chromebook but also have the added functionality of um, you know, uh, running Ubuntu based or well, you know, really just any Linux offline program that works with Ubuntu. So, and you know, I'm sure most of you are uh, familiar with what Ubuntu is. It's probably the world's most popular Linux uh, distribution. So yeah, this is the, um, you know, website that we are looking at here. It's cublinux.com. Um, when this uh, project originally started, it was actually uh, called uh, Chromixium, I believe. And they did actually have to change the name because Google actually ended up contacting them. Um, I actually believe that this is only made by one guy, actually. As you can see, this is his name right here. Um, but yeah, they uh, Google actually contacted him basically saying that the Chromixium and the Google Chromium project the names are kind of too similar and they just kind of wanted him to do a you know name change and that's how we have the cub linux name and they don't actually really say on the website i don't believe when the project was started um i'm not 100 percent sure if they do um but essentially you know like they uh, kind of do say here like is this backed by um you know uh canonical or is this backed by google um and Either, you know, obviously it's going to be no, this is an independently made thing. And you will notice here um, on the download page, they do state that it is only in um, the RC or release canned stage. And basically this means that it's not finished yet, so you can't really, um, you know, expect it to work 100%. They do say that it is very stable but there most likely will still be some bugs, so you can't really rely on this as a full daily use operating system just yet because they are still trying to get those the last few bugs kind of ironed out. Um, and you may also notice that the 32-bit uh, download is uh, kind of blurred out or you know uh, kind of grayed out here. And that is actually because that um, Google Chrome and Adobe Pepper Flash, as it states here, 
Um, they don't actually work on 32-bit Linux machines anymore. They both um, stopped supporting 32-bit Linux machines. And so, you know, you can still download this if you want to. It's still hosted, but you're not really going to get the full functionality out of the operating system as you would the 64-bit. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some people trying to that, that have a 32-bit based machine that would like to... Um, uh, you know try this out but you're really not going to be getting the full uh, functionality out of this you might just want to go install something like Ubuntu or Linux Mint because you're probably going to be getting more you know functionality out of that um, so yeah I have downloaded the 64-bit version it does say that you're going to need a at least one and a half gigs of RAM I gave the VM 2 and this does actually support Windows 8 and 10 uh, Secure Boot and UEFI, so that's all good as well because a lot of newer uh, machines have that. Um, so let's just um, get into the actual, you know, installing this in a virtual machine, something that we usually do in these videos. Um, so I have it, uh, you know, all set up here. As you see, I have given it, as I said, 2 gigs of RAM. I've given it a dual-core processor and 20 gigs of hard drive space, which should be plenty. I don't plan on really, um, you know, installing that much stuff on this, but let's just power on this machine. We're gonna make it full screen here, and we're gonna see what uh, Cub Linux is all about here. So when we boot up um, to the installer, we get the um, similar looking uh, Ubuntu style thing at the bottom here, and a very similar Ubuntu style uh, boot screen, although it's always been changed to say Cub Linux. So, you're probably going to notice that the installer, I'm just going to take a guess, will look mostly like Ubuntu because this is based off of Ubuntu. Um, and it's probably going to have the whole uh, live CD thing where you can just simply boot into that and actually run the operating system off of the CD, which is a, a very nice feature um, that most Linux uh, distros do. Yeah, as you can see right here, they have uh, try cub or install cub. So you, you can actually try the operating system off the CD without doing anything to, to, you know, to your hard drive, which is very nice. But obviously we're not gonna be doing that because we're gonna wanna get the full, um, you know, functionality out of the OS. So we're going to install cub. And they haven't actually changed the uh, Ubuntu logo here yet. So that's actually kind of funny. Um, we're going to download updates while installing. We're going to erase disk and install cub. So we're going to do that and install now. And it, it's pretty simple from here. Partition tables of the following devices changed. Okay. So it's just going to uh, basically let you know how it's going to uh, partition the drive. So we're going to click on continue. So yeah, it's uh, going to be copying the files over to the hard drive. As you can see, it just is, is, is you know, going to go through and tell you what cub Linux is all about. It's going to say Cub Linux combines the best of Ubuntu and Chromium, and it's just kind of you know go through and, sh and show you everything. It it does actually have the same you know uh, launcher style thing that Chrome OS has. So we're going to be getting into all of this because I have actually used Chrome OS and Ubuntu before, so I I know how both of them work. And I know what to um, you know expect when using both um, you know operating systems. So I'm really interested to see how this OS takes both of those and kind of combines them into one. So yeah, it uh, looks like that it's not going to be taking that much longer, uh, as you can see here. Um, so what I'm just going to be doing is I'm just going to pause the video here, and I will come back uh, once it is finished with the uh, setup here. All right, so we are back. I have finished installing uh, Cub Linux, as you can see here. I've also gotten VMware tools um, installed on this virtual machine, so we are able to actually, you know, use this at full 1920 by 1080 resolution. So it's going to look very nice on the video. Um, and I have actually been, uh, you know, using this for the past 30 minutes or so, and getting used to, um, you know, some of the things that this OS has to offer. And it essentially is what it claims to be. It is a um, sort of a uh, mixture uh, hybrid between Chrome OS and um, Ubuntu Linux or really any uh, desktop distribution of Linux and that's one of the things that I have noticed although it does kind of tend to put a more focus towards web-based applications as you can see down here at the bottom 
you do have the same style um, Chrome OS app launcher as you can see down here I think it is the exact same launcher um, that is uh, from Chrome OS although it might be a, you know slightly different as I will uh, explain in a few minutes here um, so you know you have uh, shortcuts to the uh, Chromium browser to Gmail Google Drive YouTube and the files which now this file manager is your you know basic Linux style file manager now in um, Chrome OS the file manager I believe only really shows you the files that you have on your Google Drive if you are signed in to your uh, Google account I believe that the file manager will only like basically show you the list of files that you have and I, I do believe you may be able to download like a few um, you know images to use as like a desktop wallpaper and it might show that in there as well but it's a very basic file manager however this one is your you know full-fledged Linux file manager that you can go through all the folders you can view all of the uh, you know system folders and everything which Chrome OS does not allow you to do without any sort of modification and another thing that you guys might be wondering is the uh, chromium name for those of you who are not really familiar with what chromium is it's basically the open source version or the open source um, core project that um, google has that they you know kind of use as the back end for google chrome there are a, a, a lot of um, Google uh, proprietary features that are taken out of this version, but this is the version that they actually make open source to let other people use and um, you know freely modify. And there are a, a lot of web browsers out there that actually use uh, Chromium source code that they uh, you know modify and make their own browser with, and that is you know totally uh, you know legal to do. But this is how that they uh, do it right here is with the Chromium web browser. And one of the differences that I have noticed besides the file manager is also the um, app launcher right here. Normally in Chrome OS, when you were to uh, click on the app launcher, it would bring up a um, you know small little uh, pop-up window here that would show you your uh, you know list of apps and and all the um, you know uh, programs that you have on your computer. Now, in, in, in this version, and this is actually what Chrome OS used to do, so I think this might just be like an older version, but this, um, when you click on the app launcher, it actually just brings up a standard uh, Google Chrome window with all of your web apps. So, you know, uh, the web store, Google Docs, Gmail, you know, all this stuff here. So you're not really going to be able to launch any desktop Linux you know programs from this app launcher here but there is a way to do that which I will show you in a few minutes here um, but yeah this is a, a essentially just for launching web-based programs and that's that's kind of why that I said yeah it is kind of focused you know out of the box towards web apps um, and that's also because that this is the only app launcher that is in this um, sort of launcher thing down here by default. There's not like another uh, app launcher. This is the only one, and it's for um, all of your uh, you know web apps. And all these other ones down here work as you would expect. Um, you know, YouTube will actually bring up a uh, you know separate window. So the uh, YouTube app, as I said, works as you would expect. Although it's kind of contained in its own window. This isn't a full uh, Chrome browser because um, you know there's no like uh, n you know navigation bar or uh, bookmarks toolbar or anything like that up here this is just solely for um, watching YouTube and that's kind of the same way all these other things are down here with same with Gmail and uh, Google Drive now you might be wondering well how do I launch you know plain old Linux programs how do I launch um, or install even um, you know get uh, desktop program as well. So yeah, the the only way out of the box to actually you know browse for for um, Linux programs is to actually right click on the uh, desktop and go to this little applications uh, menu, and this is where you can actually get to a sort of like um, you know Windows start menu type of thing where you have all of your um, you know uh, control panel settings in here. You can go to uh, your accessories programs everything is kind of broken down into these folders here and these are all of your standard 
uh, desktop programs, although there is an internet category that does have all of your web-based programs, although some of them, like the BitTorrent client, are, which is basically, you know, transmission. This is basically a, you know, fully-fledged desktop program. So most people would not really want to, every time they want to launch a, you know, program, they wouldn't really want to, you know, have to right-click, go to applications, and then find whatever that, that they want in here. So what they have done is they've made it very easy with this applications menu um, thing. And for, for whatever reason, they have not added this to the launcher down here by default. And I'm not really sure why, but to you have to essentially do it yourself. And to you know do that, all you have to do is go into this menu. So go to uh, accessories. It's the first one right here. It's applications menu. And you just want to um, open this. And it'll open it up in a folder here with this sort of other icon here that says drag the icon to the dock. This this application menu comes from the Cardapio project. I think I'm saying that right. Please know Cardapio is no longer developed and some of the preferences might not work properly. So maybe that's why that it's not added by default because they're not really sure if it's gonna work 100%. But this is your, like the only thing that comes out of the box as a sort of, um, you, you, like, you know, start menu, uh, like, alternative type of thing, or a, um, you know, uh, like, Ubuntu applications menu, like, alternative. So, all you have to do is just drag it down to the dock, and you can drag it, you know, right here if you want to. Actually, it has to be, I think, in front of that. So, you know, right there. I, th I thought you could move it. Okay, so good. You can move it right there, which is nice, because I think you can just unpin this if you want to. Or just, you know, kind of drag it over there. Yeah, so you, you can just, you know, get rid of that if you don't want it. Because that's just basically going to open up the same things that you have down here. So now you got this applications menu. And this actually opens up a standard, you know, Windows-like start menu. Where you got all of your programs right here. It's got the same things that were in that, um right click context menu you know like your um, applications graphics internet like all the different folders and it has a recent documents folder so all the things that you recently opened so yeah this is probably what people would want to use if they were using this is what i would probably you know recommend to use or get something um, from the cub linux software center which i will be showing you off in a few minutes um, and I feel like I've been saying that a lot. Now some of the other nice things you can do uh, from this uh, right click context menu is you can change your wallpaper. That is the first option right here. So if you don't like this one, it's a very easy um, you know, option for you guys right there. So you can just um, you know, change it to say this one, which looks very nice. Um, next one is the full uh, control panel. There is this kind of thing in here that has the um, like a, a bunch of different settings from the control panel, like all the in, like individual control panel applets. This is actually the full uh, you know control panel programs that kind of contains all of these applets. And something that I, I did notice is you only have to click on each one of these things one time because I was um, you know double clicking them and it would open up two windows. Um, as you can see, or no, well that one didn't for some reason, but yeah, you only have to click on them one time and it will open up. Um, but there is still, I, I've been noticing as I've been using this, there are still a few bugs. Some of these, um, things in here were kind of crashing. Some of the windows can be slow to open sometimes, but that is to be expected because this is a, it's still in um, RC or uh, release candidate, so it's not 100% finished yet. So you can't really, you know, um, expect it to work 100% as it's supposed to. Another nice option that, that they have in here is the run command. Now this is something that I think is very nice because I am one to, if I know what a uh, program's command is, I just kind of like to, instead of, you know, going into the menus and you know trying to find it I just kind of like to type it into you know something like this and getting to it very fast and easy and I'm sure there's a lot of people that use Linux that are um, you know like that and this this provides you a very easy way of you know running you know programs that you know the um, uh, you know basic uh, commands for so that is the third option in there and again um, besides that the fourth option is again the um, applications 
Under that is to sign into Chromium, which is basically just like signing in uh, to Google Chrome, and then you have log out and shut down. So one of the other things that I want to mention uh, regarding the Cub Linux control panel is how many options that they give you um, right out of the box for customizing the dock settings. And you can do a lot of things. They have in here options for changing the theme, the position, as you can see when I um, you know, kind of mouse over here, you can change it to where like when you mouse over like an icon, it'll kind of bounce up at you, which is nice. And Chrome OS does not allow you to do this at all. I'm, I'm you know, have, have not seen any uh, dock customization options really at all, you know, not nearly to what you know what we have here so yeah as i was saying they do give you options to change the theme here so if you don't like the um, default chrome os style theme you could change it to say something that is transparent where the icons are kind of more um you know packed close together and that kind of makes the uh, dock bouncing effect um where the icons pop up but you kind of look a little bit you know nicer as before it was kind of getting chopped off um you can change it to the matte theme, which kind of gives the dock a little border. Um, they have this GTK Plus, which gives it like a little, um, you know, bottom border. And I'm just going to leave it on the uh, Cub Linux theme for now. They also allow you to change the actual positioning of where the dock is. So, you know, if you're kind of one to like your Windows start menu at the top of the screen, as I see a lot of people that are, you know, like that, or if you want it at like the right or left hand side, um, and you've been using windows like that well you can do that very easily here as well and you know you could change it to have it on the top and for, and for some reason when it first does this it kind of um you know glitches out and does this kind of weird thing where it, it's you know obviously a, a, a you know glitch of some sort but if you just um go like to the right side and then the top it'll be perfectly fine and it'll be up here and something that i think is a really cool feature is they do allow you to change the like alignment of where the dock is so you know if you want it to be in a specific area of your screen like if you want it to be in the bottom center of your screen well you can go right here and change it to the bottom center and you can even kind of change you know exactly like if you want it at a certain point on your screen you can do that and they give you very like a you know a lot of customization options so if you want it in the center of the screen if you want it at the very end of the screen where it kind of um you know blocks out the uh you know clock and everything i'm sure there's a way to fix that um and yeah fill which is kind of in the center of the screen as well so let's say you've been using mac os 10 and you're used to the dock being in the center of the screen well you know you can do this and now the dock looks, you know, just like it does in uh, Mac OS X. It's in the same position. You can even change the icon size. Like if you want it super large like this, you can do that. You can make it really small if you want. And so like if you have like a bunch of icons and you can even make the uh, icon zoom, which is the, um, you know, effect. It would probably look better with this, um, with the uh, transparent theme. You, you can see how it, you know, kind of pops out at you. A little bit better so next we're gonna be taking a look at the software center that I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video so all you have to do to get to the Cub Linux software center is go to the applications menu it's gonna be under the system tab here and this is also you know grouped in with a bunch of your uh, Linux system utilities and it's right here the Cub software center sorry not Cub Linux the uh, Cub software center um, but yeah you know you can just go in here if you have something that you want to search for like say you want to search for solitaire you could search for you know right here this uh, solitaire game and you can add it to the apps basket so and let's say uh, you also want to get 3d chess for uh, x11 right here you can add that to the app basket as well so once you've gone through here and you know kind of browse for the uh, actually uh, let's get 7-zip as well <laughs> you know so yeah i mean you know once you've gone through here and you know gotten all the apps that you want obviously you know you don't have to do it at, at all at one time you know you can come back um but you know once you've gotten all the apps that you want you just go up here to the apps basket and it'll tell you everything that it needs because you know some of these applications might not have or they might need packages that you don't have on your system currently so it's going to tell you all the packages it's going to need and all you gotta do is click on install software type in your password and it's gonna download everything 
and there we go we got a, a nice little notification over here it says apps installed successfully and launching your new applications is very simple as I'm sure you all know all you got to do is go to the um, applications menu it has made this new uh, games um, folder right here and here are the two games that we installed 3 chess and Isle Riot Solitaire so you can just you know run these games and as you can see they work perfectly fine and yeah that is essentially it for for this kind of section over here and over on this uh, right menu you do have your sort of system options and this also gives you some options to you know log out and all that stuff so you have your uh, clock and calendar you have your volume settings you have your um, internet settings right here and then you also have um, XFCE Power Manager. This is something that is most like a third party that the developer has installed onto here. And it seems to be working very well. I mean, I'm, I'm not using this on like a laptop or anything like that. So it's not really gonna show um, that I'm like, you know, like on battery or anything, but I assume that this would work in showing um, how much battery percentage that, that you have and it also allows you to change the options of like what happens when uh, the power button is pressed and when the sleep and hibernate buttons are pressed if you have like something like a hibernate button i don't on my computer um and it also allows you to change the um like dimming options uh, of your um, display so like if you want it to sleep after a certain number of minutes and it also shows you like I mean, I'm obviously, uh, you know, plugged into line power at all times because it's a, you know, desktop, but it'll show you that. Besides that is your uh, power option, so you can choose to, you know, do your uh, basic options. You can, you know, switch users if you have, you know, somebody else using this computer. And, yeah, that is basically everything down here. And... I think that about wraps it up for a quick little overview of Cub Linux. I think that this has a lot of potential as the um, original commenter said. This seems like it's going to be something that, I mean, I would personally use something like this on like an older, um, you know, uh, machine that I found that couldn't really run a full version of Windows because, you know, Chrome OS to me doesn't really have all of the features that I want and I, I kind of, you know, would need something that has or that also has the um, ability to run you know desktop Linux applications and Chrome OS has as I said at the uh, beginning of the video it has a lot of nice features because it, it, it you know it is fully web based but that also comes with a few shortcomings because it's not able to run you know native desktop applications so this kind of takes both of those things and combines it which I think is something that is very you know nice and something that I think that a lot of people who find you know older computers or people who want to modify their um, you know Google Chromebooks, um, I think this would be a, a great secondary option. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.